Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We actually made it. This is uh, this is kind of remarkable. This whole thing worked out, to be honest. It's been a bit of a, well, you know how it is on this show. I, I can't, I can't just change one thing. I'm like, oh, I know. I'll change 13 things. And two of them I'll save until right before it's time to go live. So there we go. Here we are, live, just barely. So there's a, a whole lot of housekeeping on this one. So right now I see there's still a number of people watching over on the original channel. And there's a big old thing that show this says, this show is live right now, but not right here. I mean, it is, but you can't participate. And there's this really annoying thing in your face. Um, scroll down, open up the description. There's a whole new channel, the Photo Joseph live channel, brand new YouTube channel. This is where I will be doing all of my live from here going forward for reasons I'll get into in a moment. But right now I see eight of you hanging out on the old channel. So do us a favor, scroll down, click over to the new one, close out this window. I wanna see only people popping in and out of that stream and joining me in the proper stream. So first of all, let's just get a quick hello and make sure that y'all can hear me and see me perfectly fine. I see there's a few people in the chat room. Jeremy and Luis, you have already said hello. I'm gonna bring up your chat right here just like so. And Jeremy is first with a big old hello. And look, that's even working, man, I got, I got things working. I'm like kind of, imp I'll tell you everything that I changed. Um, I'll tell you. <laughs> but once I get things rolling here and making sure that everything's actually working. So hello to you. Let's see who else is here. We got Luis in there. You're here. Hello. Greetings. Nicodre. We got Amir. Hello from Israel. Excellent. Are you doing online private support? Man, look at that. Straight up a call for uh, for private support. Yes. Photojoseph.com slash one to one. The number one T-O one. That's where you go and you can sign up from there. Thank you very much for asking. I do appreciate that. Harold says check. I'm gonna take that as a good kind of a check. We've got Don in the house and Sheldon and John and Jason and Max in Gothenburg. We have a whole bunch of, well, look at all these people. Audio's a bit staccato on your end. Oops, uh, Dave says audio's a bit staccato. Okay, let me, let me know if anybody else is hearing weird audio. Let me check my monitor here and turn my volume back up. Let's see, how is that sounding on my end? It does sound all right to me. So someone else is reporting weird audio, let me know. If no one else is getting weird audio, then Dave, you might wanna just refresh the browser. We got Dave, we got Amir, hello from Denmark, hello from Slovenia, what more good to see you there. I will hopefully, hopefully be there in August, fingers crossed. Let's stop closing borders and let's get people traveling again, that would be lovely. Amir says audio is fine, excellent volume, okay. Greetings from the Netherlands. Says it sounds good in Edinburgh. Nicodra says it sounds good. Ruslan says everything is good. Look at this. It's stuttering. I shall refresh. Excellent plan, Dave. Thank you. And in the Netherlands, man, y'all have found us here. That is excellent. So one more time, if you are watching, in fact, let me just check this thing real quick. If you are watching on the original channel and you see a big old thing in front of your face that says this show's somewhere else, scroll down, do as it asks and, um, and check it out there. Let's see. It looks... Yeah, it's all looking good on there. I'm streaming. So just to show you how I'm doing this, can you uh, try not to break anything here? God, the cable's everywhere. So I am streaming simultaneously to the old channel using the YOLO box and I've loaded on the YOLO box the graphic. This is just kind of cool. The graphic on here that is showing up the little graphic overlay that says go to the other channel. Um, so that's streaming to the old channel, to the original channel, to the real channel, just not the real channel for live, because live has moved. Uh, don't unsubscribe, for the love of God, don't unsubscribe from the other channel. It's just subscribe to this one too. Okay, so that's all working. Everything's coming together. So let me give you a little bit more of a background of why I've made the change, what else has changed, and then I'll get to today's topic, which is about the new web presenter. I got a box, I took the box away. Anyway, the new web presenter HD. Does this look hot? Is the picture on me a little bit hot? I think it is. Let me try. It might just be my curtains are open, which they should not be. Let me know if that's any better. It's a whole new camera setup as well, so that may not be totally dialed in. Let me know if the picture looks good or not. Um, let me just bring this back up in the meantime. So let me explain what all has happened. Let's start with why I'm on a whole new channel, which by the way, if you're watching this, please do subscribe to the new Photo Joseph Live channel. I got to hit my 100 subs so that I can get an official channel name and, and leave it off the gobbledygook 32 letters. Um, and yeah, that'd be good. Anyway, so that's the first step to hit 100 so I can, yeah. So why a whole separate channel? I've been working with a YouTube channel guru, shall we say, 
who's been helping me to grow the channel and kind of strategize on things and so on. And through his analysis, he determined that the live shows which I leave up, and mo most of you know that most live shows get taken down from the main channel right away um, after they're live or shortly after they're live. They go up as members only, and, and we'll come to that. And if I forget to come to that, somebody remind me. Um, but historically, I do a live show shortly, usually right after. Sometimes I forget, and it takes a couple of hours. But at some point after, I take that off of public and make it members only. Occasionally, though, there's a live show that's a, that needs to be staying up public. And so it stays up public. The problem is that live shows, obviously, they're long, you know, 45 to an hour, sometimes even longer. And those shows, understandably, don't get the views that a regular 5, 10, 15 minute show would. Um, don't get the views and don't get the view duration. Totally get that, right? That's normal. But it's a problem for the channel's uh, performance, metrics, YouTube juice, all that good stuff. It is no bueno. So he said, how would you feel about stopping doing live for a while? At, at which point I laughed and laughed and laughed. This is absolutely no way I'm going to stop doing live. I love live. My whole channel started as live. There's no way I'm stopping to do live just for the channel, just for the metrics. But, you know, he explained his reasoning, which I just explained to you. So I got to thinking about it. And I thought, well, there's an easy solution to this. I'll just create a whole separate channel. I don't care about the metrics on this channel. All that matters here is that you guys who want to watch me live can find it. So that means you do have to subscribe, hit the bell, right? If you're following me on Twitter, Photo Joseph, then I usually always announce it there. Um, if you're subscribed to the newsletter, which if you're not, I finally started doing the newsletter again. I've been getting a lot of help from various sources and trying to build things up again. Uh, there is a newsletter. If you go to photojoseph.com, you'll see a link somewhere on that page about the newsletter. It's also right now in my Twitter bio and my Instagram bio with a link to that. So subscribe to that. That will announce the next live show as well. But that newsletter is only every other week. And the sh live show I try to do every, you know, every week. Um, and maybe I'll do more. Because of this whole new setup, maybe I'll do more. I'll do more like spontaneous, let's just go live, boom, because I don't care about the metrics. And that's the whole thing. I want to be able to not care about the metrics. And by having a whole separate channel, I don't have to care about the metrics. The show will go live. It will stay live. Anybody can watch it for five minutes or the entire thing. I don't care. All that matters is that you guys are subscribed and you hit that bell so you get notified when I do go live. Okay, so that's the reasoning behind it. So once again, for the few of you that are watching on the original channel, and I can see there's some of you there, scroll down. You don't want to watch it here. There's a big old box in your face that says, scroll down, scroll down, click the link to the new channel, which is Photo Joseph Live, but doesn't have an official name yet because I don't have enough subscribers, um, and subscribe there. And hopefully by the end of this show, I'll have enough subscribers that I can get a proper name on there. So that's why I've done that. So, you know, apologies for the confusion, but that's the way it is. I will be running a show like this simultaneously to both channels for a while just to make sure that people know I'll keep this overlay. I might even at some point, I'll just remove the audio entirely or play music or play an audio thing that says, please subscribe to the other channel, and, you know, just to be really annoying. But even this, I have to make sure that as soon as it's done, I delete it so I don't have any problems. All right. So um, let's see here. Is that that? Let me let me go back to the chat. And I do believe that's that part of it recapped. Let's um, let's pull the chat chat back up and Let's see what we've got. Let's see. Watmos is great news for August. Yeah, tell me about it. That's in Slovenia. We are hoping. I will be there for the whole month. Many of you know, regular viewers know that I am planning to move. It's, it's my wife's home country. We're planning to move there in 2023. That has been the plan for a very, very long time. 2023 is getting closer, isn't it? And so this August, we plan on going and we're going to go to visit family but we're also going to spend a couple of weeks living in Maribor, which is the city we're going to live in. And kind of, we rented an apartment for two weeks, just an Airbnb place, and just kind of experience living there. I got to talk to the registration office and about the visas and, and uh, you know, figure out insurance and business taxes and rent versus buy and where I'll work from, all that. We got to start figuring it out. Still two years away, a year and a half by the time we go there, but we start. To, it's time to start figuring these things out in earnest. And so, um, yeah. Big plans, big plans. Still a little while away, but big plans. Ah, ooh, that's better clear as a bell. Excellent, Dave. Good to know. A refresh fixed all. I'm a bit pale, Chris W. says. I kind of think that might be, is that exposure? Okay, let's play with some camera settings. Um, and I will explain that in a little bit. But let me, let's see, pull up this. And you say I'm a bit pale. Let me try darkening it just a little bit. 
Let's take, uh, let's try that. We'll just take the ISO down just a tiny bit. So I'm gonna leave it there for a little bit. Tell me if that seems or feels any better. It actually does look a little better here. I'm looking at it on like four different monitors and obviously none of them match. And so I'm trying to figure out which one's right. So tell me if that's a little bit better. That might be, that'd be good. Um, you worry too much, a picture is fine. Yes, but fine is not good enough. It must be perfect. That's what I do, man. I, you know, I, I gotta make these things as good as possible. It is what I do. Hey, from Berlin, one of my favorite cities in the world. Love Berlin, and thank you. I'm glad you love my content. You made it, Dr. Ello. Excellent. Subscribe. Thank you, thank you, Neil. Um, so once again, if you're watching this on the old channel, leave the old channel, link down below to the new channel, on the new channel, hit the subscribe to the channel button, please, please, please. It's gonna help me to put this whole thing together and get it moving more quickly. All right, so, um, all right, the next thing that changed up is the camera. So many of you regular viewers know that the camera that I've been using was an old GH. In fact, let me, let me just grab this, hold on a second. This is the... I forgot I had that little picture in picture that was for a demo that I was doing, um, but let's get rid of that. There we go. Okay, um, the camera that I had up here was this, the GH4. GH4 with the YAG, and the YAG is, I mean, th there's part of me that kind of misses this thing. It's a beast, it's massive, but the cool thing about the YAG was that it had, okay, XLR inputs, so you can see the, um, see the XLR inputs on there. Uh, there we go, a couple of XLR inputs on there, it has a big old honking DC power in thing on there. There we go. And then on the other side, oh no, underneath it. There we go, let's pull that down. Pull these little doors out of the way. It has, get some light on this thing. It has a bunch of SDI ports, right? So those are, let's see here, time code in and four SDIs out. Pretty slick. So that's cool. So you got a built-in HDMI to SDI converter, and then for your XLR audio in, you got your um, adjustments, your level adjustments for the audio, and then there was a full-size HDMI port on it. Super cool, right? So that was the YAG in this big monstrous thing. Um, really cool product, huge, but really cool. And the reason I've been using this camera as the webcam was primarily because of that well, first you get the DC in without doing a little adapter. It's just, you know, that's what that does. gives you the power. Um, but the both the SDI outputs and the XLR inputs, all very, very handy things to have for the way that I have my live setup set up. Well, I decided to change things out. So what this is now is the new BGH1, the box camera. And I'm, I'm going to talk about this and its setup in depth in another show. I'm still kind of tweaking how it's set up in here, but what's really cool about it, so it doesn't have built-in XLR input, but I got an XLR one on there. So my mic is, you know, this mic is routing into it. It has both HDMI and SDI out. So I'm feeding the SDI out at, uh, the SDI can only be 1080p, which is one slightly unfortunate thing, um, but the SDI is out at 1080p, which is converted to HDMI and run into the ATEM mini. So that's how you're seeing me. The HDMI is out running at 4K, running into my Mac Pro, I've got a Blackmagic four, four banger HDMI input card. So that's running straight into there. So when I do, when I record demos here, I can record in log directly from there. So I've got log HDMI output at 4K, LUTed SDI output at 1080p simultaneously from the same camera. And then the coolest part of all is all the controls instead of having to run around to the back of the camera and back and forth, it's all in software. So I've got a software view on my screen and I'm not gonna show you that today. We'll do a demo on that later. But I can see on my screen, my, my aperture, my shutter angle, you know, all the settings, all the previews, I can do it all on here. So that's, that's kind of cool. Um, and it's, you know, it's still not the greatest autofocus in the world, but it is good, auto good enough. So I can now do these sorts of things and let it, you know, do autofocus. Um, and then let it pull back. And that's that's working out pretty well. You know, again, not lightning fast, but it works. It's way better than the old camera was. And so that's pretty cool. So that's how that whole setup is. So um, yeah, that's that's that new setup. And again, lots more details to go into. Same lens, 12 to uh, 35 f 2.8 lens, same lens that's on there, same little parrot teleprompter for when I do recordings and I need that for, um, but it's just the camera that's swapped out. And I'm excited about this. I really like it. Um, better IQ for sure. I mean, the sensor is way, way newer than the GH4 sensor. So overall, it should look better. Um, 
Anyway, but that that comes down to why the look is a little bit different. I wanted to see your opinion on on how that looked in there. So, so there we go. All righty. With that said, let me go back into the chitty chat and see Jeremy. Hey, from Sydney. Hello in Sydney. Hi from India. Alan, how are things in India, man? I so want to go back. I was supposed to be there last November. Obviously, I had to cancel that. Still got my workshop on like maybe it could happen this November. Yeah, I'm clearly not taking anybody's money yet because it's not quite. Mm, but there we go. John McGill says the bell is not working for you. John, you know, the YouTube bell, as important as it is, as you hit that stupid button, it doesn't always work. You know, thanks, YouTube. So all I can say is that you, other than obviously subscribing and hitting the bell, um, do please make sure you're following on Twitter and everywhere else just to make sure you catch the announcements because sometimes they just, they get passed and that's just the way it is. Sad, but true. Greetings from Italy. Good evening to you in Italy. I hope things are... Um, Hope things are getting good there. You guys are, and again, heading into another lockdown there. Man, this just this is not a happy place right now. Chris W., much better. Okay, I'm, I think you're talking about the the um, um, exposure, so that would be great. Say hi to Milani when you're in Slovenia. Uh, she hasn't gone home, has she? Um, Neil has an audio question, an actual question. Excellent, let's try and answer it. I use the Shogun 7, awesome. I have three cameras with XLR, okay. Put audio into camera one, but people keep people keep telling me to go straight into the Shogun. Is it not better going to the camera? Um, mm, interesting question. I think it's going to depend on the camera because the only let me think. Actually, let me think about this. I don't have the expansion cable that you must have for the Shogun that gives you the XLR inputs. Usually, routing the mic into a different place comes down to the preamps. Are the preamps in your camera? better than the preamps in the Shogun or vice versa. I would imagine the ones in the camera might be better. The Shogun probably doesn't have anything special. For best quality audio, you probably would want to go into uh, a proper audio interface and then into the Shogun. But you might, if it's just dialogue, you probably can't tell the difference. But um, and it's going to depend on your mic too, I suppose. There should not be a difference. Uh, there really shouldn't. At that level between those two devices, heck, they might even be using the same preamps. Um, I don't think it would make a difference. If anybody else has got another opinion, by all means, please share it in the comments. Make sure you tag me that or the other. I have no idea what you're talking about. So please let me know what that is and I will come back to it. Um, I think it was discontinued. Oh, perhaps you're talking about the YAG. Oh yeah, again, this was the GH4, right? The GH4 came out in, hey Google, what year was the Lumix GH4 released? Let's see if she can do this. 2014. 2014. Hey, Google, stop. 2014. Ooh, that was a long time ago. That was a long time ago that camera came out. So, hey, I don't care. I'm not listening to Hulu. Hey, Google, stop it. Yeah, Hulu. Stop listening. Creepy thing. Um, there you go. 24 or 30 FPS. I'm at 30 right now. Um, yes, but lens on the BGH1. So, again, the same lens. The 12 to 35 F2.8 Lumix lens is on the BGH1 right now, and I am at F. Four. I'm not at f2.8. I'm not wide open. Um, I could go wide open and get a little bit softer background, but I don't. I don't need like ooh, cinematic depth of field shadow whatever for the live show. It's, this is totally fine. Um, also, oh, other changes. So I used to have a just a big LED light, some cheap whatever, with a blue gel on it to put blue on the background. I've now swapped that out with a NAN light that has full RGB NAN light. So I can change it for different shows. So for example, if you've seen my new ATEM mini tips series, <laughs> if you haven't, go watch those. Um, you'll see it's a red background. So I'm going, let's see here, I go full red, brighten that up, and then I change my, there we go, change the background like so. Um, so those are the hue lights that are on the color, the little ones. Let's put those back to the purple, put this back to the blue. And I don't have presets on this, so it's always going to look a little bit different. And I got to darken a little bit because that blue is super intense. It's like one of the most intense LED blues I've ever come across. Um, anyway, so I changed the background can change now more as well. It's kind of fun. Okay, moving on. Moving on. Um, one more time, I'm just going to say it again in case you are watching over on the old channel. Stop it. Scroll down, link to the new Photo Joseph Live channel. Visit the show here, watch the show here, subscribe, please, to this new channel. It is super critical that you all subscribe to this so that you know when I go live and so that I get enough subscribers so I can actually change the channel name and give it a proper URL. 
Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay. Um, Arne says, uh, good evening from Buchholz, Buchwood, Germany. Awesome. Love Germany. Yeah, okay, good. They're talking about the XLR1. Don't have the breakout cable. Oh, deciding if you need it. Okay, see, I don't even know. Um, Jeremy, could you make a video on networking for video production in, say, a flight case or something similar? Networking for video production. I'm not quite sure what you mean, networking for video production. Elaborate, please. I'm sorry. I don't quite know what you're after there. My TV is getting a multi-view program signal from a 10 Mini Pro. By chance, do you have a solution for it? Oh, is not getting a multi-view program signal from the ATEM Mini Pro. Okay, so in the ATEM software, let me pull that up here. Let me get this set up on screen so I can share my... Sorry, I got to set this up. Oh, and I also have to switch to the right ATEM. Um, switching to the ATEM Mini Pro, I will share the screen momentarily with you. Here we go. Uh, here. Okay, so on the output... Oh, let's hide all this junk. On the output you can choose this output menu. This is your HDMI out. And so you can choose whether you want that to be any one of the inputs, which I've renamed. So by default, it would just say Cam 1, Cam 2, Cam 3, Cam 4. Well, Cam 1, Cam 2, Cam 3, Cam 4. Um, or it can be the multi-view, or it can be the program, or it can be the preview. So, or it can be the direct, which is your uh, your HDMI input 1 direct, which is a very, very slightly higher, la lower latency feed. But anyway... Um, Cameras one, two, three, or four, multi-view, program, or the preview. So any one of those. You most normally want the program. Um, if that is not the problem, then uh, then elaborate, and I will try to help you. All righty. Moving forward here, Neil. Oh, nope. That's a different discussion. Why BGH1 and not a Blackmagic Pocket? Well, lots of good reasons, Harold. Starting with, I am sponsored by Panasonic. So there's number one. Um, this... I'm not, I I have never used any of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras other than playing with them. I've never actually shot with one. Um, nothing against them. Great cameras. If you're using ATEMs, they're awesome because you get the camera control. There is no doubt about that. For what I'm doing here though, this, I mean, I know you don't have the software control over the camera that I have here outside of the ATEM itself. Um, this is just, this is what works. Plus again, I'm you know, sponsored by Panasonic, so kind of obligated to use their stuff. Um, but I, this is the perfect camera for this, giving me dual outputs, SDI and HDMI, one with a LUT, one without, is perfect for this because I can load up the um, 4K log footage straight into my computer, record ProRes straight to hard drive when I'm doing my demo, my, my software training stuff, and that's just phenomenal. So... Yeah, that's, I don't know how many of those things I would give up by going to that camera, but but there you go. Your A10 Mini tips are great. Keep them on. Thank you. I recorded three more yesterday. Um, I was hoping to get one edited for tomorrow's release. I got, I got, I got, I don't know if I'll get to it. I have a thing tomorrow morning I have to get ready for, so I might not. But anyway, we'll do it. We'll get there. I got three more already shot. Jen, hello from Denmark. Super. Oh, here we go. Clarification on the flight case thing. Meaning how inside a flight case, wiring together using a network switch, Oh, to control a HyperDeck, A10 Mini, et cetera, bring internet into HyperDeck. Got it. Okay. Um, you know what you should do is head over to Caleb Pike's channel. Caleb Pike did a whole thing on building an A10 Mini into a flight case with all kinds of accessories. Super, super cool. Go check out his video on that. He's got it all sorted out. Um, I'm not going to be building anything like that, so I'm not going to say, I'll do a video on it because it's not going to happen. He already did. Go check his out. Thank you. Tell him I sent you. If you don't watch Caleb already, you definitely should. Neil, okay. Uh, oh, wait, now we're, it's on to the other discussion. They're talking to each other. Okay, there is that. Um, all right, so how about we have a little look-see at the, let me get this pulled up here, at the new ATEM Web Presenter HD. This guy right here. Uh, web. <sighs> yeah. Oh, well. Ignore the weird hair thing falling off of it. The brand, brand new Blackmagic Web Presenter HD. It is actually hooked up right now. So here's, this is, <laughs> this is part of what I was struggling to get sorted out before I came in here. Um, first, I'm going to show you the interface for it. If I can remember, oh, sorry, I just got his whole own app. So let me launch that and I'll show you what the software interface for it looks like. Let's hide this. Let's move this and bring this up to screen. Here we go. So this is what it looks like in software. 
um, Web Center HD. You've got a little bit of status down here. I am not currently using it to stream because I didn't want to be streaming with it and then not be able to show you things in here. Um, this just tells you the current status, so it's not live streaming, the duration of the stream, what platform you're set to, and the current bit rate. But if I open this guy up, here we get to see all of these settings. So under live stream, you've got your streaming standard. You can stream, you can set it to auto, so it just automatically chooses what it should be streaming out to, but you probably want to set this. Um, it will automatically switch to whatever the input is, assuming the input is one of these. However, the hardware will auto, will downscale from 2160p's Ultra HD at 60p. So you can feed into the WebPresenter HD 4K60, it will stream up to 1080p60, but you can still feed it that high of a signal and it will downscale, which is incredibly awesome because that means that you could do a 4K presentation. Let's say I wanted to do a show like this through my big ATEM, my big 4K ATEM, record all the outputs in 4K, but still live stream in HD, not live stream in 4K, but live stream in HD, this would allow me to simply take one of the 4K outputs from the ATEM, plug it straight into it, and let it deal with the downscaling, and off we go. So that's pretty slick. So that's kind of cool on there. Um, you can load streaming settings. So this is about using the uh, the ATEM bridge, the streaming bridge. Sorry, got to get the right name in there. The ATEM streaming bridge. So many of you are already familiar with this. The ATEM streaming bridge is a little box, $295, I think, so $300 box that receives a streaming signal directly from an A10 Mini Pro, an A10 Mini Pro ISO, and now a WebPresenter HD. What this means is that you can take any camera anywhere in the world and a WebPresenter HD, plug the two into each other, and then stream from that camera direct anywhere in the world, point to point, to your streaming bridge box, which you can then feed into a switching system and do software into whatever you want. It's just an input that is coming in. So when you set up that process, you generate a key file from the streaming bridge, you save it out, it's a little XML file, and then this software setting here allows you to load that in. Or you can just choose to stream wherever you want. So if I want to stream to YouTube, go there, which server, drop in my key, and then choose your quality of your stream from streaming low, medium, or high. This is like uh, 12 megabit, I think, at high, I think is the highest. And then um, Hyperdeck low, medium, and high goes all the way up to, I believe it's 60 or 70 megabit. So this is quite a high stream that is not meant for streaming over, the over. Um, excuse me, not meant for streaming to like YouTube or whatever, but it is meant for streaming to a bridge on the same local network. So that's one of the really cool things about the bridge. I said you could stream to it from anywhere in the world. Well, that also means, of course, you can stream to it from anywhere on your local network at super high bandwidth. So you could have, for example, a bridge in a conference room and stream to that bridge from your camera. Pretty cool stuff, pretty slick. Um, so that's how that works. All right, um, let's see here. So then, uh, and you can go on air or not from here. What's under here again? Oh, just to remove the imported settings, right? And then set up here, you can give it a name, choose your language, check your um, your software version. You can choose what type of audio meters. I am going to be totally honest. I have not quite figured out which ones are the right ones for me. Um, I'm going to show you what this looks like in a bit. And then your networking protocol, and that's basically it, right? Soup. Oh, and then connection, you can stream using Ethernet or mobile, and you can choose which is the priority if you have both available on there. So. Um, so, you know, I would set it to Ethernet if I was using mobile as a backup. So there we go. So that's all set up in there. That's that's just the box. I can't show you the front of the box other than showing you what the front of the box looks like because it is currently plugged in on the rack. But what I can show you is the output from this. Now, when you plug this thing in, it's got a... Um, actually, let me do... Hold on. Let me do this. Let me pull up the picture of the back of it because that's kind of cool. I think I do. I still have that open... Uh, you know, oh, I know what I'll do. No, it's all right. I'll do it like this. Let me just get the pull up the photo page on this thing. Uh, Web Presenter HD, Presenter HD. There we go. If you're buying one of these, make sure you get the Presenter Web Presenter HD. I don't remember if I put a link to this below or not. Hopefully, I did. I probably didn't. Um, if you look at the back of this thing, you've got your SDI input. Notice this does not have HDMI input, which I got to be honest, I feel like that's a it's like a little bit cheap, but I'm pretty sure if you look at the back of other similar hardware, you'll find the same port layout. Blackmagic is really good at utilizing the same enclosures, the same shells and buttons and other things across multiple devices. So they don't have to recreate a bunch of stuff, which helps keep the cost low. For example, if we go back and look at the front of this, 
this has these six buttons on here. Well, call does nothing right now. And in the manual, it says will be used in a future update. And I'm kind of like, yeah, right. I've heard that before. That's never going to get used, man. Um, but it's just a space that was there. And instead of having to make a whole new box, they just put a button and it called it call and said the manual they'd updated at some point. Yeah, whatever. Same thing on the back, I think. I, I'm theorizing here. I wish that it had a second HDMI port so you could do HDMI in. It does not. So your only input is SDI. Now, to be fair, you can buy an HDMI to SDI converter for 50 bucks. So it's not like it's a big deal, but you know, it'd be nice, but it doesn't have it anyway. But it does have SDI in and then an SDI loop out. So you can just put this in the chain and just slip it anywhere in the chain and out you go. And then it has two outputs, monitor out over SDI or out over HDMI. That's what we're going to be looking at momentarily. You've got your standard power and then a 12 volt DC power, which it seems kind of like, well, do I really need two different power options? But anyway, you do. Your Ethernet for your live stream and then a webcam, but, uh, webcam USB-C port, which is actually replicated up here. Behind this port, there is another USB-C port and you can use either one. They do the same thing. And this allows you to configure it, which you will need to do the very first time you set it up. But it also allows you to use this as a webcam. So if you take your whole live streaming setup and then just like with the A10 Mini, Pro ISO, you could um, plug the USB output into your computer and it becomes a webcam. Same thing here, it just becomes a webcam. So that's pretty cool. Uh, whatever your camera setup is, plug into there and now suddenly you've got that as a webcam, nice. But the output is where this thing gets really cool. So let's see if I got all this right. I, If I just load up the output from the, uh, from the web presenter HD, you will see an infinite loop inside of the monitor. I set up a whole multi-source thing and I scripted it and built a macro to set part of it up and it's all set up into a button. When I hook this button, it should load up that screen and take this picture and put it into the right position to overlap the mirror effect and work. Let's all fingers crossed on this one. Yes, it worked. There we go. So there we have it. Um, you can see there that I do not, I'm not using it to stream, but you can see all kinds of cool information on it. So I'm gonna look over here so I can see this information. You've got your streaming status up on the top left. It tells you what platform you're set to, the server that's on it, your streaming quality, and so on. You see the standards, your time code. I've got time code feeding into this from the bigger ATEM, so that's it's actual accurate time of day time code. Um, the colorimetry, because if you're going to stream in BT 2020 for doing an HDR stream, you can do that as well. You've got, if you've got embedded closed captions, that's on there. The whole luminance and chrominance bits, the X's on there. I read about it this morning and I started to understand it. And now I don't, so I'll have to go back to that. But, um, it's important data about the quality of your stream. And then you see your audio input. And I love this. There is the, the waveform changing over time. It's showing you the last six seconds of audio. And in the video input, you see on the video input, you're seeing the last six seconds of video. So, you know, if I like go out and come back in, you're going to see in the, uh, <laughs> you see the little thing stream. <laughs> it's kind of funny. You do this, and you're like five, four, three. And then you see yourself on there like in all, anyway. It's childish, obviously, but it's kind of fun to see. But you see the history of the stream there. Kind of neat. Um, anyway, all kinds of channel status info on there. And then at the bottom, you see your data rate, which is currently very low because I'm not streaming. Although that is curious because it should be showing me the data rate even if I'm not actively streaming. Let me pull up the software again and change the data rate. I'm going to change it to HyperDeck High. Um, it's interesting. It has not... huh? I'm not quite sure why that, I wonder if it's because of the infinite looping, looping that's actually happening that it's showing that. Curious, hmm, not quite sure. Anyway, then you see the cache. So just like the ATEM, and if you're wondering, no, you, if you're thinking to yourself, of course it's not showing in the data rate, you're not streaming. It's actually, it's supposed to be doing it regardless. So I'm not quite sure why it's not. Um, I just read that in the manual this morning. Anyway, the cache is the buffer. So just like with the ATEM Mini Pro and Mini Pro ISO, it has an internal buffer so that if your internet signal goes a little bit wonky, it will not lose frames, it will buffer the frames and then feed them out. But at some point, if the buffer gets full, then you will actually start dropping frames on the live stream. Uh, with the, As long as the buffer is there, if you cut out for a second, it won't drop that second, it'll just pick up and keep on playing a second late. So pretty slick, but... Um, it's got that too. And then of course you see the meters on the side. So here I'll change the, the meter types. I need to talk to somebody smarter than me about this, but I can switch between VU minus 20, VU minus 18s. 
PPMs minus 20s and PPM minus 18. So I don't know. I just had it set here and I'm just going to leave it there for now. Um, yeah, so that's I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Not a whole lot to it. Uh, I have not actually done a live stream with it yet. That'll be the next show, I guess. The next live one I'll probably do through there. But this one, I wanted to be able to pull this up and change the settings, which I can't do while I'm streaming live, or at least some of them I can't do while I'm streaming live. So I didn't want to stream with this one. I wanted to do this. Um, anyway, so there's that. Okay. How do I get out of this view? Crap. Oh, right. I think this will do it. Ooh, yeah. Yes. Oh, right. But I know I've now messed up my... Um, my picture-in-picture um, -picture overlay. Let me go and reset something else before I do that. There we go. Okay, so uh, that's that. Let me go back into the chat and see what's happening in here. Let's see here. Bringing this up. Where is, where is, where is? There it is. Um, chat is on screen, and there she is. After selecting multi-view on my ATM Mini Pro, I get a black screen or no signal warning on my LG TV. Okay, try a different monitor. There's, and make sure your A10 mini is fully up to date. So two things here. The HDMI out is very generic, should work with absolutely any monitor in the world, but it doesn't. There are absolutely 100% reports of monitors that just don't work. For whatever reason, just don't work. In a update, maybe two or three months ago, maybe two, uh, Blackmagic did release a software update that made some tweaks to that HDMI signal specifically to address compatibility with a few fringe monitors. Maybe yours is included in that list. And I don't think that they had a list of these monitors are now supported. It was just a generic, your monitor may now be supported if it wasn't before. So make sure you're fully up to date and try a different display. That's about all I can tell you there. I really need a web representer, Neil says. Well, there you go. Or maybe you just want it. Believe me, I know the feeling. Um, let's see here. Jonas says, can you tell the delay between the A10 Mini Web Presenter HD and the ATEM streaming bridge. Okay, so the streaming bridge input will have a delay of about a second, a little bit under a second. That's what we've seen in all the tests that we've done. Pretty much no matter where it's streaming from. We did an event where I had Aaron streaming in from, from the other side of Oregon, and then we had um, um, John streaming in from Norway, and they were both the same amount of delay. So that was pretty awesome. I couldn't tell you if you're on a local network what the delay is. I actually never measured that. That's interesting. One would think it would be less, and logically it would be, but I, I can't promise that it is. Excuse me. Very thirsty today. It must have been that delicious burger I had for lunch. Lockdown confirmed. Photo Justice Channel helps, though. Keep up the good work, man. You, Aaron, H2R. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you. We are here to help. There's a problem with notifications. Apparently, I cannot activate notifications because the video is made for kids. You asked me to realize, but why would it not allow me to receive notifications now? I don't know because my show is definitely not set as made for kids. So I couldn't tell you that. Bizarre. And I know, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't have that up. Um, oh, see, I did screw this up. Um, it's not, a, is it a DV? Nope, it's not a DV key. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, here we go. On air. Nope, that's the wrong one. Luma. Nope. See, I knew... DVE. There. Great. Oh, yeah. See, that's... I don't have written into my script to change back to that. So I need to... Okay, that's easy. Easy fix, though. Manually change it, too. Let me just turn this on so I know if I choose the right one. It is the upstream key, and the upstream key needs to be set to... No, it's a Luma key, and it needs to be set to that and that. And great. I totally broke it. What? How... You know, you do these things, and you're like, I'm sure I got this figured out. It's not the, it's not the Luma key. It had to be the Luma key. It had to be the Luma key. It's on air. That is on air. Why is my chat not coming back up? I done broke. See, I knew. I knew once I went into that web presenter setup that that changed things, and I didn't remember what it was going to change. How can I switch this? I could run the show open routine again, but that's not, I don't want to do that. All right, give me a moment. We'll get there. We'll get there. I am convinced that we'll get there. So the chat is coming out of there properly. Um, I have not screwed that up. That's still coming into the right place. Transits on air. It's not set as a chroma. It's not a pattern. It's not a DVE. It should be a Luma. Oh, that media player. Oh, dummy. Oh, ha. 
I'm sitting here switching settings on the ATEM Mini. It is not the ATEM Mini where the stream, where the overlay comes in. It is the ATEM 2ME. So I'm, let's see if this is what's happening. I am, oh, and I can't even bring it on there. Um, I can't even bring my screen up because it's all tied together. I need to switch over to the ATEM 2ME. Helps if I hit the right button. ATEM 2ME. There we go. And now I can bring that key onto air. Let's make sure I'm looking at the ME1, not the ME2. There it is, and put it back to the right one and set all of this properly to the Mimo video and the Mimo Val Alpha. There she is. Now we've got it. So now everything is working right. Yes. So here, what was happening was in the ATEM, oops, in the ATEM software, I was messing around with the ATEM Mini Pro ISO. And I'm like, why isn't this working? Nothing's working right. And I realized it's because I was controlling the wrong switcher. So back to the other switcher. And there we go. So I need to build some of those things into my buttons that I set up to load up the presenter, web presenter, because I forgot about that. Anyway, I'm sure you're fascinated. Sure, you're fascinated. Um, all righty, Osaki is here. Excellent. Jonas says, I don't know. Okay, you guys are still talking about the monitor. Happy Tuesday to you too, Jason. And let's see here. Sharbex, I think it'd be better to do all your lives on your main channel. Why split the subscribers, views, etc.? cetera? Uh, Sharbex, you were not here from the beginning. Okay, so and I know there's a lot of people here who were not here in the beginning, so allow me to explain again why I'm doing this madness. It all has to do with YouTube metrics. According to my, and it makes sense, according to my YouTube guru that I'm working with, um, the live shows that I do on my main channel that get left up because for whatever reason, they're important enough or significant enough that I want to leave them up for everybody to see are hurting the channel because nobody watches long live shows anywhere near as much as just short edited shows. And almost nobody watches them all the way through once it's no longer live. So suddenly I have all these long videos that are getting low views and a very low percentage of view. And that is hurting the channel metrics. Overall, it's hurting it all. So his suggestion was to stop doing live. I said, absolutely no way. But the compromise was I'll set up a whole new channel for live. And now on this channel, I don't care what happens here. Live happens here. That's it. But y'all got to subscribe to the live channel. So if you haven't, Sharbex, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Hit the notification bell so you know when I'm live here. I will, for a while, stream simultaneously to both to make sure that people find out about this. But eventually that will stop. And of course, the streaming on the second channel has a big, ugly overlay so that you don't hang out there for too long and chat's turned off. So you don't hang out there for too long. Scroll down, click on the link over to the proper channel, to the new channel, subscribe here, watch it here. Hopefully that helps to explain it. Um, there was something else I wanted to mention about that. So on the old, on the real channel, let's call it the real channel, on the Photo Joseph channel versus the Photo Joseph live channel, which is this one, on the Photo Joseph channel, I have membership. You have the $5 a month membership. That membership gives you primarily access to live streams once they're no longer live. Since the live streams will no longer, no longer be playing there, that channel benefit ceases to be of any value. So there are two other benefits that you get out of this, uh, out of that subscription, membership, whatever. Some videos you get early access to, I can't promise it for all, but some you do. And currently the ATEM mini tips are ones that you will get early access to. So for example, the last three, I uploaded those all on Thursday and released them, fr uh, no, sorry, I uploaded them all on Wednesday and release them Thursday, Saturday, and Monday, those as of Thursday, when the first one went out, members had access to all three of them. So that will continue to happen. The ATEM mini tips, just kind of they're by their design. I will be doing them in batches, uploading them in batches, and then staggering their release. And so any paid members will get benefit, uh, will get access to them all right away. And then you get the fun little icons and emoji things. Um, but the main thing is you're helping to support the channel. So if you decide to cancel that membership because you no longer need it to watch the live shows later, I fully understand. If you want to keep it because you want the early access and or you just want to throw five bucks to the channel every month, then I would appreciate you staying there. So so that's that. OK, um, right now, moving on. Alonzo, question, is there a chance you show the whole process for the streaming using streaming bridges through the internet? Um, I will do that. In fact, you know what? That is not on my list. I will make that one of my ATEM mini tips. Let me find my list for that. And here, I'll show you my list. You can see which ones are coming up. Let me make sure nothing here is, I bet, hold on. I need to find a way to open this up on its own because I do have sensitive info on this. How do I, I know there's a way to, ah, there we go. Okay, let's get this out of the way. 
get this mini tip up and mini tip page up and here you go. Okay. So these are the ones that I did. Auto camera switching, loading the graphic with the angle, modifying the XML, did those. Have recorded but not yet edited and released. Graphics, the titles here are obviously not real titles and working, they're just working titles. Graphics with the proper transparency through the ATEM Photoshop plugin. And I also show you how to make proper transparency graphics without the plugin, which is awesome. Um, how to update and keeping your, your ATEM up to date. So where to get the software, how to keep it up to date. Picture and picture control. This is a kind of a bigger one. So how to manipulate and save custom picture and picture settings. And then I've got how to live stream. So I'm going to set up a different video for each platform, how to set up YouTube, Facebook, and blah, blah, blah. On um, how to tether from your phone, using macros to control the Hyperdeck Mini. Many of these are your guys' requests. And this is not in order necessarily. This is the order that I've written them down. This is not necessarily the order that I will do them. Um, how to tether from your phone, how to use macros to control the Hyperdeck Mini, how to move macros from one ATEM to another, setting up companion, how to find, how to film the ATEM buttons, um, including dimming. So many of you know, if you've ever tried to shoot your ATEM, that they flicker. So you have to set the right shutter angle or shutter speed to make them not flicker. And I think that note about including dimming is for me to check. I think that when you dim them, it changes. That bit me in one of my own recordings. And I didn't even realize it until it was too late. Mm -hmm. Um, explore super source, setting up the green screen, using green screen as a picture in picture, saving the startup state, combining macros. This is a biggie. This is kind of a really advanced one. So taking um, multiple macros and combining them into a single one. And I have examples that I'll do like turning all audio off on all channels or adding a pause to an existing macro. So I got some, a lot of really cool things to explore in here. Um, slides through the ATEM laptop playing on a second screen. Oh, right. So that's a whole like how to, this is basically, you've got one laptop and you're using that laptop both to place slides through and use it to do a Zoom call type of a thing. It's a whole like, you know, very inception type of a thing. Anyway, we're gonna do that. Um, add a second HDMI out to using, well, with a Pro or Pro ISO and that's using the bridge. And oh, by, behind the scenes of how I'm even making these videos, somebody asked about that audio compression or the whole audio setting. And now I'm going to add on to here for you setting up um, streaming bridge for remote or local use. Okay, there we go. So that is my plan so far. And I, I know there's gonna be plenty more things that you guys want, which is awesome. Keep the ideas coming and there we go. Uh, Sharbex, YouTube shouldn't care if YouTube does some license script or whatever on the same channel. Sharbex, I don't know how big your YouTube channel is, but these things matter. Um, whether they should or shouldn't is a whole other discussion. Can it stream to YouTube and Facebook parallel? I assume you're talking about the stream, the web presenter HD. No, it can stream to one destination at a time. However, if you want to go to multiple destinations, then you stream to a service like restream.io, which is actually built into it. Um, so if I pull the software back up again, uh, let me hide this now. If I pull this back up, oops, back up again. Hello, hit the right button. Back up again, Restream.io is one of the options that's built into it. It's funny because I did a whole video last year about how to modify the, of your ATEM so that you could stream to Restream.io and then they went and they built it in. Cool. Wish you guys had told me that beforehand. Anyway, um, oh, chat, where's the chat? So for HDMI, can I can HDMI into the Video Assist 7 inch 12G and then SDI out to the SDI web presenter? Correct. Yet yeah, any HDMI to SDI converter will do it, including the Shogun. There you go. Um, or the Video Assist. Yep. The stream goes simultaneous to all platforms. Just talked about that. Got to run. See you later, Richard. Glad you love my shows. Thank you very much. What's the advantage of using a web presenter compared to, say, a video go or live you solo? Is it just a cheaper alternative? So. I haven't used any of the video products in quite a while. Um, they are, yeah, they are more expensive, uh, definitely. The cheapest, I think the cheapest video is like, I wanna say 1200 bucks or something. Um, that's a good question, let's see. I do have a client who has one, a video, which model? I don't remember, but, um, and I've done some remote configuration of it. It's been a while, so I'm trying to remember the differences on there. I mean, you certainly have better monitoring on the Blackmagic. It's cheaper, absolutely. It's like less than half the price cheaper. You have the better monitoring. 
Um, scaling, the web presenter will scale down from 4K. Uh, setup is definitely easier. You can stream to an ATEM streaming bridge. That is something you can't do from any other product. That's kind of unfortunate. The ATEM streaming bridge is an amazing product. I do wish that Blackmagic, and maybe they'll update it in the future, but I do wish that they allowed you to stream to it from other sources, not just from ATEM Mini Pro, ATEM Mini Pro ISO, and the, um, and the new web presenter. Uh, I would love to be able to stream to it from software using OBS or use other streaming protocols instead of just RTMP. There's, there's, there's a lot of potential for that product. I think it's an amazing, amazing product uh, with a lot of potential. So I don't know if they can do some things in software or if it'll be like a version two, but yeah, that thing's, it's an awesome, awesome piece of hardware. Uh, there, I'm sure there's other advantages, but I mean, at the end of the day, it'd be, it'd be hard to justify a video just for live streaming at least. Um, yeah. Video does have other things like a global network accessible. If you've got a bank of these, if you're doing large productions, um, I, I did something with the company at some point where they're demoing to me kind of a God view of streaming encoders all over the world. And it's incredible the control and monitoring you can get from anywhere. That's not something you really get on here. Not that you couldn't VPN into a server and into a um, into a destination where one of these is located and look it up. But you know, having this kind of web view of everything was pretty slick. But that's like major enterprise level. You know, certainly not common streaming type needs. Hello from the UK. Thinking of the HD to buy. Good time. Oh, right on. Um, Graham, I don't think you'll be getting a one second delay over internet. More likely, it's the streaming bridge itself. So it would still be there with the LAN issue. That may be entirely likely. It may be entirely possible. Yep. Uh, Dave Cole's unsubscribe and resubscribe to fix this. Uh, I guess you're talking about the notification. So cool. Excellent. Um, just make sure you resubscribe. <laughs> Hello all. Sharbex says, you don't think my YouTube expert friend is right. All right, Sharbex, I, you've reached out to me before. I know you, are, you have very strong opinions about YouTube. I don't know what your actual experience is with YouTube and growing channels. Um, he works with some very, very large um, uh, creators. But if you have facts other than opinion, I would love to hear about them. Please, by all means, reach out to me. Um, but right now I'm going with his his thoughts on this. Have you already scheduled the Epifan stream with Aaron and John? We have not. We definitely need to do that. We have not scheduled that. Um, it's true, a channel I manage is all messed up. Reposting the edited version is the way to go and take off full lives. There you go, Mark. That was actually what I did on the original channel for a long time. When my shows were only live, when that's all I did was live shows, that's what I, I figured out at some point. It was, I'm trying to remember, there was a, a kind of a trigger event. Um, interesting, looks like the, I'm having troubles with the other stream to the original channel. Huh. Very curious. I wonder what that's all about. Anyway, um, I figured out, oh, I remember what it was. Okay, so, at some point, when Ryan was here, you might guess, for those of you who have been around for a long time, remember Ryan, he used to work here. Um, he was doing kind of an analysis on the channel. And we determined that my best performing videos over the last, say, two years or something, were all live shows that had been re-uploaded. Every single one of them. It wasn't about the content. It was about the re-upload of it. So that was really interesting. Okay, so at that point, we started re-uploading every show. Every live show, when it was over, I would record the show locally. Once the live show was over, I would kill it from the live, um, from, uh, you know, take it off of public, whatever, make it unlisted, make it private, and then re-upload or upload the recording of the live show, and we trim it. That way I could add a head and tail to it. And that was the format that I did for a long time. And that worked out great, and that was really good for the views. Because it was a still a recording of a live show, sometimes it was a bit long. Towards the end, you guys have been around for a while, might recall, I got really efficient at it and making it a tighter show um, to the point where I even added a secondary show that was the live Q&A, so the live show was not audience interactive at all, which was great for producing a more tight show, uh, but it, it just wasn't as much fun, right? It wasn't the whole interactive thing. Anyway this history goes on and on about why I ended up stopping doing live that way, but I did. So now I'm doing edited, uploaded shows, and these live shows are much more casual, much more spontaneous and bringing up the chat at all times and messing things up, and I don't care if I mess things up, and it's all fine, um, which is great, but it does mean when I leave a live show up that it's got real consequences on the channel. So 
So anyway, so Mark is supporting this theory and Mark, um, I'm going to say that you're right. Okay, Dave, it fixed the bell. Excellent. You have to go attend a work meeting. Sorry to hear that. Uh, keep on going. Thank you very much. Thanks for sharing your knowledge. Anytime. It is my pleasure. This is great. Well, I'm getting a good number of subscribers here. I'm wondering if now if this is a, if without anybody knowing the show is scheduled for today, I wonder if this is a better time of day to do the show than in the morning. Tell me, for those of you who are here watching, which is all of you, um, is this a better time of day for you to be watching a live show? There's nothing that says I have to do the live show in the morning when I do it. Well, it's convenient, but anyway, let me know. If this is better, maybe I'll just change the lifetime because this is, I'm getting good performance here. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, thanks for the bell fix. Excellent. Good, 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 good. Are you going to buy an A10 Mini Extreme? It looks amazing. I am not because, um, shush. Um, I am not because I don't need it for my own setup. I've got the ATEM 2ME, which is a far more capable version, even though the Mini Extreme does have a couple things the 2ME doesn't. Stupid hardware. Um, I don't need it for my setup. I know Aaron and others are doing going to do tremendous tours of it, so I'm going to kind of miss out on doing tours of it. But I think right now I'm going to focus on the ATEM Mini Tip Series, which are tips that will apply to all of the hardware. Maybe at some point I'll get one and do something with it, but, um, but for now that is not the plan. So anyway, there's a rambling answer to a simple question. Sharbeck says, I'm thinking to bond multiple LTE 5G connections using a laptop in my backpack with dongles to optimize my portable live stream bandwidth using something like a Speedify VPN or something video live view can do. Cool. Oh, that is, that's something else that video can do, but it does require a paid service to bond multiple cellular connections. I forgot about that. That is a pretty cool part of it. Um, yeah, bonding connections is awesome, but it does require additional services. But yeah, that's super cool. That's super cool. Lee, hey, buddy. It's a better time for you, but you're in the future. Okay, good to know this actually works for your time zone. Good to see you here, man. Suits you, 10 p.m. here, Dave. All right, good, good, good. Check your collar on your left side, GQ, please. Ah, oh, this shirt, it always does that. I love this shirt, but it's getting old. You know you got that shirt that's like your favorite shirt, and you can't, you can't get rid of it. <laughs> I had one similar to this, and I just wore it to death. Wife's like, honey, we're burning it. This is good for you. You work nights. Cool. 11 p.m. in Eastern, in Western Europe, but it's fine for you. All right. All right. Yeah, I mean, I got a fair number of Europeans on here, so good. Seven to eight Eastern works best for you, but you would also watch a replay. Cool. Good stuff. This is so much more fun than the replay, isn't it? Love the mini tips. Thank you. Glad you guys are enjoying the mini tips. Yeah, I. that was kind of, to be honest, the mini tips was something I had thought about doing a long time ago, and I was talking to Black Magic, and I was trying to get them to sponsor it. Um, I thought, look, this would be great. And we had discussions. They didn't go anywhere. And then I kind of tabled the idea. Um, and then one day, I, I just very spontaneous, I went, I'm just going to do these. And I did a few and went, ooh, these are actually really good. So there you go. So that's how that came up together. I'm out of water, which means I'm going to lose my voice soon. Oh, we're in that odd bit where you've changed the summertime, but we haven't. Oh, prefer later. It's 10 p.m. here in Scotland. Um, yeah. Hopefully... Our government can figure this out and banish this whole stupid time change thing. They're trying. They're trying again. <sighs> in Europe, it's around 11 p.m. right now. So for us, a morning show would be better. I don't know if there's a bit of a split of a difference on there. I started it at 2 p.m. my time. I can't do it earlier. If I started at 1 p.m. my time, that would make it very tight with my family lunch schedule. But um, anyway, don't your wife will get rid of it for you. Oh, already did. Your three-line chats are getting cropped at the bottom. Oh, okay. Um... Thank you. I will check that. I thought that was set up, but I will check that. Um, <laughs> Sharpex, I think you can live stream whenever you feel like it and don't even warn people you have fans around the world. Well, I would like to live chat when the most people can be here, but, um, but there you go. Um, let's see. I'm going to pull up an, a bigger chat and see if I can fix that three line crop. Let me find a nice biggie here. Let's see here. Need to find a big old long, somebody who sent me a whole bunch of info. Here we go. There's a good size one. Oh yeah, look at that. It is being cropped. Huh. It's am I at the right size? I am at the right size in there. That's weird because it's definitely low, huh? All right, give me a second here. This is an easy fix. This is an easy fix. There we go. Super. Ha. That is done in Mimo. So if you're wondering how that whole thing is happening, you're looking at this through Mimo. This is a super cool setup. Just to kind of run through this again here. Let me turn this off and show you. 
Oh, is that cable? I don't think this cable is long enough. No. Can I? I'm going to. Okay, you're looking at cables just not quite long enough. And if I unplug it, then we'll. Ooh, wait. I have a little more. Maybe a little more leeway there. I can unplug the power. I don't need that. Okay. You are looking at. So there's my laptop. And you can see the setup. That's the chat with the green screened on the bottom. That is using Aaron Parecki's, um, uh, what do you call it? Chrome script, Chrome plugin, Chrome script. What do you call those things? Chrome add-ons, whatever. Uh, that reformats the chat. It's using CSS. It reformats the chat into that format that you just saw there. So I've got the chat bubble against a green background. And then I'm using Mimo Live. So let's see here. Here is the screen. That's the, um, well, that should be off. That's the mirrored screen coming in. No, sorry, that's the wrong one. Um, that is not the right one. It is chat, Chrome, here we go. Why is that? Why is that cropped so you can't see it? That's weird, anyway, so this is it. So it's this input, um, chroma keyed. So if I open this, you should see, there we go. You can see the original screen coming in. So there's the full screen which is then chroma keyed out. The green is keyed out and it is cropped. So, and a little drop shadow is enabled. So you can see a little drop shadow on there. Um, it is cropped. You can see the crop setting here. And is there anything else? I think that's all set. A little color correction. Oh, to saturate it, like loses saturation for some reason, weird. Anyway, so that's all in there. Um, yeah, so there's the final result. And then that is brought on screen here, which I can reposition. So what you are seeing there is that. So, uh, la. so the actual output, now I gotta reposition it. The actual output is going out over a, let's go back to this, is going out to my Ultra Studio 4K Mini. No, I did not buy an Ultra Studio 4K Mini just to do this, that would be stupid. But I did buy it for HDR grading that I'm doing. And um, it, one of its lovely benefits is it has dual SDI output. So I can output a key um, set the, the output, let's see here, set the device, uh, well, whatever, you set the keying mode to external and it builds a real-time mask. So it is outputting the video, the full screen video with a key on a separate channel. And those are being both fed into the ATEM 2ME, which are then comped together as an upstream key onto the screen here. So that's how that happens. It's kind of cool. It's really, really cool. It's really cool. Anyway, so that's how that works. Thank you for letting me know. I don't know why that moved. That's really odd, but now that it's fixed. Okay, let's wrap this thing up. Great time, Don. Thank you very much. Could you you could split the difference and do two shorter live shows at either end of the day? Dude, you really want to do two live show? You nuts, man. You nuts. You crazy Lee. But I gotta get you on a show sometime, Lee. I think we'd have some fun. Um hi from the UK. What up, Brosif? Oh my god. Tommy! My man, what you doing? New channel for new live stuff? Think it'll actually help the algo. I do, Tommy. I do. That is the intention. I believe with firm beliefs that the live shows are hurting the main channel. So I've set up a whole separate channel where I don't care about the metrics. I just let it roll. No longer have to worry about making it hidden afterwards and editing show, whatever. It just goes and stays and that's it. So that's the plan. Um, I'll let you know. Give me a couple months, Tommy. And if it works out, then you should definitely follow suit because you're doing more and more live. And um, live is a blast. I love it. I'm not giving it up, but I don't think it's good for the algorithm. My high school is about to buy the 2ME production 4K. Nice. What are some tips you would tell me about the 2ME? PS coming from a television studio had pro. Okay. So it's just more of everything, right? But what you lose, <laughs> what you lose from the 810 minis are the in built in scalers. Um, unless the new hardware has built in scalers on each input, but I don't think it does. Uh, I could be wrong. If, it, if I'm wrong, let me know. I should know these things. I don't. Mine is four or five years old now. It's amazing hardware. It is so awesome. I have not yet outgrown it, which is kind of a, a remarkable in itself. It is phenomenal hardware, but uh, not having the scalers has always been a bit of a bummer. And then the ATEM little mini first one came out $300 with a scaler on each input. Are you kidding me? It's just, it's almost ridiculous. That's pretty cool. Um, I, but I don't know what tips I can tell you other than keep watching my ATEM mini tips because there's a ton of stuff on there that will apply no matter which one you have. And of course, when you learn about things like uh, doing upstream keys on the 2ME, you get two upstream keys. The A10 Mini Extreme has four upstream keys. What is that? It's not fair. My buddy does 
two HR live streams, two, oh, two hour live streams, and then removes them and uploads a live stream recap 30 minutes video. He highlights the interesting parts. Yes. So totally, Chris, I think, I don't think I finished that train of thought that I was going down earlier. That's awesome. I do not have time for that. I just don't have time for that. And I really don't want to pay an editor for the, how many, if I do a, an hour long show and edit that down, that's a minimum, minimum two to three hours of editing to do that well. I'd have to pay somebody else for that. It's just not worth it. The ad revenue on these things is nowhere near enough to, to cover that cost. Um, it just doesn't make sense. So I do two things. I do my edited live shows where I, very precise, I do my thing, get it in, get it out and on with life. And then the live shows where I can be rambly and have some fun. And this is really about watching it live. If you want to watch the replay, you go right ahead. If you want to suffer through an hour of this stuff, be my guest. But it's really about being here live. So that's that's what that is. That's what that is. Um, but yeah, no, that's a great approach. And I did that for years, but uh, no more. Can you sell me a HyperDeck Studio Mini? No, I've got six of them and I need them all. Sorry. Uh, anytime, but need to schedule. Yeah, Lee, sweet. We will do it. Yes, of course, need to schedule. Always must schedule these things. Just some information. The Ultra Studio 4K Mini does not work on Windows. Blackmagic is working on it, but at the moment it won't. No way, really? Oh, that sucks. The Ultra Studio 4K is a hell of a piece of hardware. That is unfortunate. Wow. God, usually it's us Mac folks that get left behind. The AK Constellation has scalers. The AK Constellation is good. It's like $10,000. The AK Constellation, man. That is the lower version until the A10 minis have it. Yeah, that's the AK Constellation. I do not need it. I do not need AK. That's a beautiful piece of hardware. Those 30 minute live recaps get good ratings. I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. Blackmagic is doing some interesting stuff, I'd say. So I wish their Micro Four Thirds cameras had IBIS Autofocus Dual SE Full Flip. Well, that's, you just described a Lumix camera, Sharbeck, so you know where to go shopping. On what style for my video editing, I use Final Cut. Love Final Cut. Love it. Love it. If I'm catching up on a live stream that I missed, then I usually run it at one and a half times speed. Yeah, fair enough. I watch most YouTube videos at one and a half to two times speed, if I'm being honest, because um, I talk fast and most YouTubers talk too slow for me. Tommy, you, I watch at normal speed. Um, that's that. All right. We're going to wrap this thing up. It has been an hour and 11 minutes. That is a good first stream on the new channel. We got good views here. Um, again, subscribe if you haven't already. Please, please, please. It's super critical that you subscribe to this new channel so that I get the views, I get the metrics, I get the things, I get the everything so that I, I need 100 subscribers just so that I can, <laughs> um, so I can get a custom name, custom URL on here. Uh, let's see here. What is my subscriber count on here right now? Um, oh, 181. So we thank you very much, everybody. I'm going to set up a proper name as soon as this is over. Excellent. Well, that worked out well. Um, hey, I hit a thousand and I can monetize this thing. Don't really care so much. Don't make much money on live shows, but it does allow for super chat. So I will want to get to that point, but now I hit a hundred so I can do the proper things. Also speaking of, Ooh, getting close to 60 K on the main channel. Let me pull that up. Let me look at the actual number. Ooh. Okay. All right, guys, let's see if we can break this right now. I've got 59,989 subscribers on the main channel. So that is youtube.com slash photo Joseph. Let's see if we can break 60 here on the show. If you are not subscribed to that, then let's go do that right now. Where's my, I, I've got a subscriber button on here that'll show a, I thought I had one. Place analytics. I thought I had like a nice fancy subscriber view thing. Anyway, um, come on, let's do it. Let's do this thing. There's a good, there's a good site that showed kind of a cool animation of it. Um, Somebody tell me in the chat what that one is. There is a, one of the, it's not two buddy, but it's one of those that shows your live count in a nice, cool animated metrics. Everybody uses it to show when they do a big rollover. I know I've got it bookmarked somewhere, but I don't know where, and so I don't know what it is. Um, Dave, thanks for keeping it real and interesting. Why, thank you, Dave. I do my best. Hey, dude, simple things. Hello, hello. Congrats on the 100. Thank you. Um, Tony Cools, uh, cheers, mate. Thanks, you are quite welcome. I fear not having a custom URL is an issue. I feel like not having a custom URL. Yeah. Well, I mean, this channel, I built this channel 48 hours ago. So um, it's good to get there. I think we're all already subscribed over there. Probably. Odds are everybody is probably subscribed over there. But somebody tell me what that one is that I'm looking for. Um, 59,993. There's up one. Or is that two? Um, what is that? Let me just, I'll just do a Google search for like YouTube count. Oh, wait. Did I just see? No, that wasn't it. YouTube count. I can like see it in my eye, mind's eye, but I cannot, um, cannot read it. YouTube live count. No, YouTube subscriber count. Social Blade. I think that was it. Yeah, Social Blade. That was it. All right. 
let me find my social blade bookmark because I'm sure I've got it on here somewhere. Um, log in. Checking your browser before access. Oh, I know why it's not showing up there. Anyway, let's log into Social Blade. Let's see if you guys can help me hit 60 before I actually um, before I actually get this up. Let's see. Here we go. Social Blade. I'm on the right page. Where dashboard? Is that it? No, I'm on the dashboard. Where's the one that shows me authenticate favorites, product and services reports, reports? Maybe the reports. Custom court. No, that's fancy stuff. I don't want that. I just want to see my live counts. Real time. Here we go. YouTube, real time, sub count. There's the one. That's not me. Who's this person with 25 million subscribers? That's not me. Oh, enter YouTube username. Well, obviously, I want me. Duh. Um, seriously, this thing. All right, I'll just put this up on the screen here. Um... Video rank tech rank. Um, you know, these are so wildly inaccurate. It's insane. I don't know who comes up with this crap? Uh, user summary feature by similar channels. User video live subscriber count. There's the one. Oh, that's off. 59. Great. Now there's ads everywhere. That's not even totally up to date. Nah. Because it's 59. Here, I'll show you. My YouTube channel shows 59.993. Gosh, stupid thing. Come on. Let's bring it. There's got to be seven of you that haven't yet subscribed. Ooh, we got a few. 59.996. I get I should. Is there a giveaway? What kind of giveaway? I know. I'll be right back. Okay, if we can get to 59, to 60,000 within the next couple minutes, because I got to get home and home. Oh, we're three away, 59,997. How can I put this up on screen without revealing all of my datas? Let me just do this. Uh, let's see here. If I do this, do this, do this, that'll work. Is that fine? Sure, that's fine. All right, there we go. So there we are, 59,997. That's what we're doing. If I can get rid of that, if I can break 60, Within the next few minutes, I have this bag that I was supposed to give away a long time ago, and I never did. So this is the chance. This is a Think Tank Retrospective version two. This is, well, Retrospective seven, version two. This is a great little bag. Actually, I have a green version of this bag that is my favorite small bag. Um, it's got, let's see. It's got a very loud Velcro. It has the Velcro silencers, which is nice. So you can, you basically take this. How does this work? Um, oh, I already have it on. So you take this pull that over there and then it doesn't it doesn't make the noise so if you're shooting like a wedding or something you got to be quiet you do that um it's got room for a big ipad it's got room for i think a 13 will the macbook air fit in this i don't think the air i think the air will fit on the inside pouch it's great for a small dslr or pretty much any mirrorless camera will fit in here i just oh fits a 13.3 inch laptop that's what the sign says it's awesome i love this thing it's been sitting here for me to give away for probably over a year think tank is probably never going to talk to me again but I will personally ship this anywhere in the world. How are we going to choose the winner? All right, that's the next part. We're going to have to figure out how to choose the winner. We'll come to that. Let's see if we've uh, let's see if we've established the sixty thousand yet. Let's see here. We're going to do a quick little refresh on this page. Survey says refreshing. Whoa, we did it! Everybody's surprised. Thank you, thank you. That's awesome. All right, so somebody's getting this back. All right, now I got to figure out who's going to get this bag. I will ship it. So I'll ship it anywhere in the world at my expense. I'm not going to call Think Tank and say, would you guys ship one to me? No, I will ship it. Um, I hope somebody in the U.S. wins, but that's just me being selfish and stingy. But let's see here. How am I going to do a random giveaway right now? All right. Um, let's see here. People are, oh, love that bag. People are saying, according to YouTube, I'm 60K. I am at 60K. I'm looking at the comments in here. Um, bum, ba da bum sh Social Blade thinks I'll hit 100K a year from now. Yeah, no, we're on a we're on a climb right now. We are on a climb. Okay, 
So let's do, let's see, we're going to do like a random number. How many people are watching right now? So there's about 60 of you here right now. All right. I'm going to pull up the random number generator. Every, how am I going to do this? That's just insane. Um, Because then I have to read through all the numbers, find the right one. People pick this. Anybody got an idea of how to do this? (laughs) Totally spontaneously unplanned ridiculousness. Um, Let's see here. All right. Just put in a random number between one and 100 in the chat right now. Just go ahead. And if you see, scroll back and, and look at the numbers that are already there. Try to put in a number that's not in there yet. Obviously, there might be some duplicates. Do that. Okay, just, just I'll give you a few minutes to do that. I'm going to look up a random number generator. So between 1 and 100. Random number generator. Between 1 and 100. Let's make sure this works. Yes, it does. Okay. So let me kind of clear this. How do I reset this? Generate, and I guess maybe just reset this, refresh. Okay, it's going to start at five. Okay. Okay, so this totally works. Um, All right, I got a bunch of numbers coming in here. This is great. This is great. Whew, a whole lot of numbers coming in here. 27, 23, 67, 81, 45, 63, 56, 33, 30, 13, 47, 43, 36, 55, 63. This is perfect. I love it. Okay. Lots of numbers coming in. I'll give you guys a moment here. You guys keep filling that with numbers. I'm going to go put some water in this. I'll be right back. Um, whatever. I'll be You guys done? You guys filled up the screen yet with numbers? I see tons of numbers, tons and tons of numbers going by. Okay. Don't keep trying to add more numbers. God, some of you people. All right. <clears throat> okay, stop. Stack, Skak putting on one to 99. There you go. Oop, wait, that's the wrong one. Um, there you go. Skak thinks he won. <laughs> no. Okay. There's like three people with a number 12. Um, well, yeah, that's, that's undoubtedly going to happen. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. All right. I'm going to type in here, stop, stop with the numbers, numbers. I can type, stop with the numbers. Okay. Okay. Stop with the numbers. So that's it. So that's the end where I just typed in stop with the numbers. That is the end of the number thing. So that, whoop, no, nope, that, that is the end. So a couple of you just put one in afterwards. Sorry. That's the end. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the random number generator this up on the screen here and I will randomly generate a number and then I will search for that number I'm just going to do a command F. let me sure that works actually in here in the browser the way I have it set up so yep okay I will do a command F in the browser and I will find that number assuming if somebody has typed that number I will make sure that there's not multiples if there's no multiples then that person has one if there are multiples then I will um, then we'll do a new random draw with them Okay. Something tells me this is a recipe for disaster. I'm going to make somebody angry. That's what I know for sure. You do something like this, you definitely make people angry. All right. Um, There's, okay. And there's a couple of people who, winner is closest to that number. Oh yeah, that's a, no, God, no, Sharbex. I can't do a winner is closest to that number. That's good, except that then I'd have to look at every number, look for the closest. So if there is no, if there is no winner, I'll just generate a new seed. That's, I just click one button, generate a new seed. That's how that's going to work. Don't forget to disqualify everybody who has typed in multiple numbers. Okay, see, now it's getting out of control. See, I can't, I can't possibly. Um, all right, well, let's see here. Whew. Did I say don't type in multiple numbers? Which would have been logical. I don't know if I said that or not. Let's just, okay. I'm going to type, I'm going to do a random seed. I'm going to search for it. Hopefully, I only find one and then we're done. If I find, all right, so whichever one I find, I got to search and see if they did multiples. Did a lot of you do multiples? Let's see here. I'm going to do a quick scan through and see if it looks like a lot of people did multiples. There's a lot of names in here. Um, I have no idea. Oh, yeah. A lot of people did multiples. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Alex, you did a lot of multiples, buddy. What's that? What's that all about? Look at that. Alex tried to do that one and did that one and did that one. That's not okay. Okay. All right. Let's set up the rules. We're going to do this one more time. we we'll set up the rules a little bit more clearly here. One entry, between one and 100, you only get to enter once. 
you're going to put in the number, but this time, so that I can tell the difference between these and the old ones, put in, um, let's just do the letter uh, P for photo Joseph in front of it. So you're going to do a number here. If you look at the chat, you're going to do it like this. I'm going to put P00, so as if my entry was 00, it's going to be like that. Put P and then that. That's what you have to put in, okay? So P and the number. One entry. That's it. You got a couple of minutes. Go. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, I could have planned this out, but I totally didn't. All right. Numbers are rolling through. This is good. This is good. All right. Good, 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 good. This is working. Okay. It's slowing down. Give another half a minute for people who are still trying to figure out where their keyboard is. Let's pick them back up again. All right. Now think about it. It's just random. Just a random number. Pick a random number. All right. This is kind of cool. Finally figured out how to do this. All right. 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 So everybody's putting a P in front. Good. 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 People are putting a P in front. Perfect. 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 Alex says, I didn't say that last time. You're right. I did not. I did not. Although it would have been logical, but I did not. So, all right. And watch, he's going to end up winning. <laughs> the whole thing would have been for not. Um, all right. So just like that, P and a number. I'm scrolling through. I am looking, looking, looking. I'm seeing lots of P numbers. Excellent. Okay. Scrolling to the bottom of this list. I'm about to end the entries. Okay. I'm ending the entries. So um, P... Oops, P entries and here, sent. Okay, that's it. That's the end of it. All right, now P entries end here. All right, so <laughs> now got my random number generator up. Um, yes, I do. This is it. All right, so it is set between one and 100. I'm gonna hit the generate button once and this the five is the default where it loads. So, and I can't delete that. So just to prove it, I will refresh this page. Refresh the page. Oh, let's see, it brings up a different random number between one and a hundred. All right, but max between one and hundred. I can hit this button and then I will search on my page. Let me get that set up. So I'm gonna search on my page and find P and then I'm ready to type in the number and see if anybody got it. And if nobody got it, let's see, it's highlighting the P already. Um, if nobody got it, then I will just generate a random, another random seed until we get somebody, okay? I hope this works. Um, good, let's go back to the screen. And here we go, three, two, one, zero, hit it. It is 92. Let's see, did anybody do P92? And there are no finds. Okay, no P92s. So I'm going to generate another one. And P57. Did anybody do 57? We've got a P57. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It is somewhere in here. It is somewhere. There it is. Mr. Mark James has won the P57. So just to verify, 57. Mark James got the P57. Congratulations, Mr. Mark James. You are the lucky, lucky winner, winner. All right. Cool. That that wasn't terrible, was it? That worked. All right. All right. That worked. Yes. Okay. Whew. Let me guess. You live in Antarctica. <laughs> um, hit me up on Twitter. DM me on Twitter. My DMs are open. Photo Joseph on Twitter. Hit me up there. Let me know that you were the winner. I will, I will respond to you there and um, sort out your address and get this thing in the mail to you. This is genuinely, I tell you, this is a great bag. I really, really love this bag. And I'm stoked to finally do as I was supposed to do a long time ago and give this away. Hey, do me a favor. Everybody who just entered this, your cost of entry, now that you've entered, is to go follow these guys on Twitter. Go follow Think Tank. Um, is it Think Tank bags? What are they? Think Tank. Let's see here. Um, uh, Twitter. Think Tank bags. I'm going to find out. Twitter. Nope. I didn't think tank bags. Let's just try think tank. Think tank. Think tank. Think tank. Think tank. Think tank photo. That's what it is. Think tank photo. All right. Oh, there. already got a nice number of subscribers. All right. Go follow them. That is your price of entry for everybody. Even if you didn't win, please go follow them. I will let them know that they hopefully got a handful of new followers because of this. And, um, and that would be awesome. Thank you very much. So congratulations, Mark James. Let's see. Have you tweeted at me yet? Um, you haven't yet, do that. Hit me up on the Twitters, ASAP, just so I know. Photo just up on Twitter. And let me guess, he's going to tell me here he doesn't do Twitter. Uh, let's see here. Wait, is Mark James even still here? Wait, Mark, you haven't said anything like, yay, I won. <laughs> Make sure you're still here, buddy. Uh, Mark James. Mark James, are you here? 
Congratulations, Mark James. Excellent. Congratulations. Bingo. We got it. See, look at this. Yay. We got this all figured out. I think my bag is Think Tank. I love Think Tank bags. Most of my bags are Think Tank. Think Tank photo. Yep, there we go. Thank you, Sharbax. Restream has a giveaway selector. Oh, does it? Okay, that's good to know. Um, Mark James says yay. Well, there you go. The enthusiasm overfloweth. Mark James, DM me. Um, it's a Think Tank retrospective version 2. This is a retrospective 7. Is that what I said? Um, I still had the tag on it somewhere. Yeah, retrospective 7. It's a great bag. Like I said, I've got a green one. I love it. I've got the one that that dude's wearing, actually. Um, there we go. Okay, super. Thank you, everybody. That was kind of fun. Um, anything else? Oh, Restream. Quick note on Restream. I will... Uh, the streaming problems that I've had in the past, many of you are well familiar because my streams suddenly go... and they're gone, may actually be a Restream issue. I've been working with Epifan and we've been running trace routes and doing some deep digging into this and um, it is not the Epifan. It is not my network. Um, we have noticed a recurring pattern of very long ping times and dropped, what do they call it? Drop, sack, pocket, whatever, where it goes like it can't connect, um, which is not good for live streaming. Every ping to YouTube servers directly, perfectly clean. I've got a client in the UK who was just telling me about restream problems. We ran a trace route on his server to his local stream, uh, his local um, uh, uh, server, same problems. So I think Restream may have an issue. I'm going to have to have a little chat with them about that. So I'm not using Restream right now. But thank you for letting me know about their picker thing. Okay, that's it. Congratulations on the 60K subs. Thank you very, very much, Chris. Uh, that is awesome. I am stoked. That is super cool. And thank you guys for helping me to get there today. That was that was fun. That was fun. All right, Mark, DM me or you're not getting this bag. And um, and that is that. All right, folks, photo just up on Twitter, Mark. You got to hit me there. And if you don't get to me before the next live show, I'm going to give it to somebody else. All right, we're out of here. See y'all later. Bye-bye.